So in this video we're going to go over some of the features for exporting images uh, so that we can set them up in presentation sheets and documents um, and things like that using Marmoset. So I've got this scene, I've got this object which I've used before. Um, there's nothing remarkable in here. Um, the uh, sky has a child light in there which if we zoom out is this one here it's just a directional light so you can see that it there it's doing its thing and the brightness of that can be controlled there and then I'm just using a sky um, from one of the presets set quite have this um, kind of blue light I'll make that a little bit brighter so you can see it and um, just to give us a, a fill light uh, so direct light coming from here, ambient light coming from the sky and then uh, we've got a fill light coming from one side there. So what I want to do is want to use this something like this image here where I've got a, where I'm focusing on the front of it and then I've got the back of the thing in the same shot and I want to export that out. Um, so so in here we've got a bunch of settings which are useful for when rendering out images. Uh, we can set a wireframe if we want to do that. So if we wanted to get our image out and then we want to get a raw wireframe and maybe blend the two, we could do that in Photoshop, something like that. Um, the wireframe has uh, a thickness level as well. And also you can change the color of it. So I can make the wireframe red if I want, if that suited me better or you know blue or whatever I want. So there's lots of options there. Um, the other things you can do are things like you can set the obviously you can set the local reflections so it reflects uh, the 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 stuff in the scene uh, high res shadows uh, all this stuff you probably want to switch on in occlusion you can switch on and get a bit more of that and I w this I've covered this sort of stuff before so I'm not going to go into it in great detail but but you can switch all those things on and global illumination you can switch it the global illumination arm. You generally get better results. Anything that you turn up here, because this is all setting this stuff up, it starts to get more expensive. If you're just going to do an individual object, which is what I'm showing here, then it's probably going to be okay. But um, if you go into show voxels, you can actually see what it's using for its GI solution, and that's not going to work very well at the moment. So we need to change the size of the voxels to incorporate all the objects and then we can switch it off and that means that everything's getting included in that, that GI uh, calculation it's using those voxels you can see in there yeah everything's getting used great okay so uh, that's that's that the other thing you can use if you're desperate to do it um, you can in say and you want to tell watermark here um, and you can change its position I have a custom viewport setting here which comes from the uh, using the main camera uh, I've got set, uh, so that basically sets it to the resolution of that's being output which comes from within the settings in capture so this 1920 by 1080 I've covered this before but 1920 by 1080 which is the size that we're capturing um, then this is basically pushed through into the camera and then it gives you this safe frame round here in case you're wondering why that's sitting outside of that. So if you wanted to use your Marmoset tool bag um, thing in here, watermark, then you can. You can change the size of it, you can change its position, you can make it a dark one, a light one, two-tone, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm not going to do that for now though. Um, so yeah, so that's more or less what I've got set up. So doing a scene and you've got all these things included then you maybe don't need to plant these on the ground or anything like that but if you're just doing individual objects like say you want it to uh, you've made one particular hero asset and you want to bring it out then you may want to kind of make it look like these things aren't floating about in midair um, so that's easy to do if you go to um, add object drop a shadow caster in which is basically a plane that you can drop under the 
under your object and you can see that it casts a shadow and it casts a shadow onto nothing because if you look this background is basically coming from uh, within the sky um, the we're just using a sky if we wanted to the sky that's in there or we could use a blurred version of it and um, if you wanted to or in this case we're just going to use a color and make it wherever we want it to be and the shadow will cast onto any of those things because essentially it just casts onto this sort of invisible plane and um, so that's quite useful if you click on the shadow caster um, you can change some things like um, whether the edges fade whether it's simple or not and it's opacity stuff like that so but generally i think the, the settings it comes with are pretty good um so yeah so you've basically got that basic setup so if you want to actually capture that then you just go to capture settings just make sure you set the, the size so i'm going to stick with this 1920 by 1080. um you can change the sampling now, depending on if you start getting into these realms, uh, it just takes forever. So, um, obviously, the the higher this is, the better the quality. But you know, um, it depends how long you've got, really. So, I'm going to leave this at 25 times. Format PNG is fine. Um, it's fine because I essentially want to save out some transparency. So, if I don't save it with transparency and I hit OK and then I can hit F11 to capture the image um, and or I can just click on this so I'm going to capture this image and it's put this on my other screenshot so I'm going to just open this up in Photoshop bear with me if I pull Photoshop across so we can see it then essentially this is what is captured um, so where we've got this kind of fuzziness around some of this high, uh, you know, the high res stuff to do with shadows and and uh, refra reflections and stuff like that, um, you don't get any of that in, well, you get less of it in the final image, um, and it just comes out with the background we've got. And if we do have one of the other different backgrounds, it would have done that anyway. So uh, yeah, so that's cool. If we go to the settings and set transparency and hit OK and then go capture or hit F11, let it do its thing. And I'll bring this back over here and I will drop this onto here. And as you can see, it's actually just the objects and it's left the background out so it basically pulls the transparency in so say we had a background a treasure map background then I could take this and I could drop this into here and kind of put it wherever I want and essentially could start to you know lay text in and do all sorts of stuff maybe I'm going to stick a bit of a solid in there some description um, Let's give it a colour. And you know, maybe drop that in under and then I can drop that in underneath that. And I've still got some stuff going on. So yeah, that works. So that's how the transparency stuff works. And that'll work with um you know, if you've got even got things like depth of field on, uh, so if you go to the camera, any effects that you apply. So if I apply some depth of field, um, I'll far blur down a bit. So you know, it's just doing that. If I then go to capture it again and open Potato Shop up. And you can see that it's, I'm getting a few artifacts in there, but generally it's doing what it's supposed to do. So we just take that 
uh, go into this one, switch, uh, no, sorry, this one, sort that out, drop, and, you know, it's it's now blurred out, and all this, so all the effects and stuff you make will, will come through. You may get a few artifacts and a few issues with it um, as it starts to blur those things out, but it is fairly solid. So that's one way you could do it. If you want to have the background to have more effect and you want to kind of do things that are more in more in scene, the other thing you can do is you can actually drop a background image in that you want to use. Um, so if you go to add object, you can go to backdrop. If you click on that, it drops this as a, a sub component of the main camera. But within here, you can actually select an image to drop in. So I've got this 1920 by 1080 background image I've created and that drops directly into the scene. The cool thing about that is it observes settings that you've got for the rest of your objects. So actually, if we go into the camera and, you know, change our near blur to not blur out, then this doesn't blur, but it does blur into the background. So that's quite nice. And again, if I, the other thing to watch for as well is, so I've got my settings here, and I've got transparency set, but if I capture this with a background or backdrop object in, it won't preserve the transparency. So I'll show you. So if I go to capture, I drag that in. It's a new. There you go, and it's brought it in, and it preserved the blur and all the rest of it into the background, but the bottom sharper. But that's quite nice, and obviously you don't get any artifacts and stuff because it's pulling out the whole image. However, you know, like this does give you a bit less control. But it may be a case that you want to set this up with just this and then you know you want to drop in some things with wireframes and stuff using transparency and overlay them over the top and you could do that very easily.